There are eight panelists for the session who will each introduce themselves during the panel. They are proud friends of Frances Hesselbein and have treasured her friendship, her guidance, and her love. She has inspired each of them that to serve is to live, to always be positive, and to look beyond to a bright future. This session will be about how Frances's service leadership has defined their lives, their leadership, and those they touch. Thank you to all of the participants for being with us today, as well as all of our fantastic panelists. Let's go ahead and get started, and I will turn it over to our panel. Thank you very much. We're super excited to be here and be part of this event, um, honoring um, someone that is so important to all of us. Um, rather than introduce ourselves, I think you can read our bios. We want to use our time as effectively as possible. Um, and I just want to do a little bit of introduction and then um, moderate the questions. Um, one of my favorite moments about Francis was when I was at the first um, forum at the University of Pittsburgh and Jim Collins was the speaker. And the first thing that happened was the night he arrived, we all went out for Mexican food and we're sitting at the restaurant and the everybody orders and the waiter says to Francis, what would you like? You remember this tomorrow? And she says, whatever Jim has, get that for me too. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God, if she had done that to me, what would I, you know, do I know what she really likes? What am I going to do? And he ordered. Subsequently, I said to him, when you think about Francis, if you could define one thing that's different and only one thing, what would it be? And he thought, and he said, when you think about our interaction with others, some, are tr some of those interactions are transactions and some of them are relationships. And all, all of us have different balances at different moments. See it with the bus driver, or the person in the cleaners or our sister, sometimes it's still just a transaction. But for Francis, everything is a relationship, every single interaction. And um, I spent probably a year trying to prove him wrong, trying to find just one illustration where something Francis did wasn't a relationship. Be it when she checked out at the cafeteria, no, they knew who she was. Be it when we went to the Chinese restaurant and they had her chopsticks with her name on it. No matter where it was, no matter who it was, it was always a relationship. Um, and in some sense, the group of us have developed a relationship with each other because of Francis that wouldn't have happened without Francis. And at the end of each one of these forums, Francis would say to everyone there, when you visit New York, here's my address. And we will send to Sarah all of our addresses. And if anyone at the forum visits New York or Easton or Tucson, you're welcome to visit with us and talk about Francis. I'd like to start with the first question, which is, you know, how Francis Hesselbein's service leadership defined your life? Tamar, can you uh, begin that one? Sure. Thank you, Elizabeth. I, went, I met Francis when I was in my late teens. I was a Girl Scout and um, one of the things that stands out for me about Frances um, is her uh, acting as a sovereign. So the, the leadership archetype of the sovereign, Joseph Campbell, who is one of the most well-known cultural anthropologists, looked at cultures all around the globe. And whether it was in the indigenous tribal community in Ghana or New Zealand, or it was in the royalties of Europe where there were literally queens and kings who are the sovereigns. Um, energy of the sovereign is that person who is the sage person who has the wisdom and has the social authority to give a blessing in how they interact with you <clears throat> in how they see what particularly the younger um, people of the community are doing. And I think this whole forum is really set up because Frances is a sovereign, and she wanted to call the leaders from around the globe, who are the young people who are in college, um, to bless their leadership and to 
see who they are. Um, and as a young woman, I was into mountaineering at a time in the 1970s and the early 80s when women did not uh, mountain climb and when there were very few ascents of the lar highest mountains in the world that had been done by women. And <clears throat> I was, I had a goal of leading the first all women's trip up um, the highest peak in North America, Denali, up in Alaska. And at the time, I was living in Utah, which is not the most affirming state to live in, um, particularly in the 70s, if you are, were a female and wanted to make an achievement that was particularly mostly done by men. Um, and so I met a lot of roadblocks. Um, trying to accomplish the goal of getting permits and getting the training and getting the supplies to lead an expedition like that. And Frances Hesselbein came to town to a Girl Scout um, convention. And I gathered up some of the young women, some of these other teenagers, and we went uh, to meet her and told her um, our plans. And I've never been witnessed or blessed the way Frances did. She looked me in the eye when we said what we wanted to do and how we wanted to be the first. And she said, well, of course you will. I have no doubt. And she said, and she pulled her business card out and she said, and once you've achieved that accomplishment, I want you to come to New York and we'll have tea in my office and celebrate your great achievement. Um, it did, it was a defining moment in my leadership and an affirmation and a blessing that only someone of Francis's stature could have given me. And it empowered me from that moment forward um, to really seek my dreams and to really go after the accomplishments that had many barriers. And so the important lesson for me as a leader is to understand that how you witness people, how you see them and listen to them makes a huge difference in how you affirm their leadership and their leadership qualities. And certainly Francis did that for me. Thank you. Uh, Darlene, do you wanna um, jump in on how Francis's leadership defined your life? Are you muted? Are you just so eloquent. <laughs> My words are, are much briefer to this question. I would say that it is as um, Liz told us it's all about relationship. And yes, Francis is our sovereign. To serve is to live. Uh, being the first in, in my family and in every single social location, uh, every personal identity uh, throughout my entire career, including much to my sister's chagrin, I love to say this, being the first born in my family. From organizing Miss Baker's kindergarten class through um, actually getting together and our, in our Brownie troop number 693, I have to give a shout out to Englewood, New Jersey, one of the first cities to deseg at schools, thanks to Francis Hesselbein's push, which I hope to talk about a little bit longer later in terms of multiculturalism, to ensure that every single girl could see themselves to all of the paid and volunteer positions that I've ever had to date, I've been so fortunate that Francis's mantra of to serve is to live and to live is to serve has been uppermost in my mind. And as Francis has shown us and our sovereign has her words in action, live the words, she's helped me to understand to translate that to living with purpose, to living fully and living right out loud. Francis models that all of the time. And as Sarah has shown us through her eyes when we're with her on, on Saturday, to her waves, to her low, to her picking up on particular words, uh, to, to continuing to be very present with us. I've learned that yes, we can do it all, just not all at once. That's how Francis has defined my life. Thank you, Sarah. I am Sarah MacArthur and I am so happy to be here. I, I love getting to hear 
getting to hear all of our Francis stories and how she's uh, helped us so much. And Liz, I, uh, what a wonderful introduction, thank you. So for me, as with all of us on this panel, Frances is my mentor and my role model. Her example of uh, her leadership, her life of leadership and service, it's been instrumental in the choices I've made since I've known her. And today, Frances and I are co-editors in chief of the Leader to Leader Journal, so we get to work together. And she shows me every day how to live her leadership philosophy, which can be summed up for me in a few Francisisms, like what we've heard, to serve is to live, um, work is love made visible, leadership is a matter of how to be, not how to do, be ye an opener of doors, and I must say my, my personal favorite, bright future. Thank you. Diane? So I had the wonderful privilege of having an office right down the hall uh, from Francis for a period of time. And if you read my bio, you know I spent uh, 30 years in the Army and I worked at West Point for a long time. And so I often say the greatest leader I ever met uh, was my colleague at West Point. And it wasn't a general, it wasn't an esteemed scholar. It was a uh, then 93 year old uh, former housewife from Western Pennsylvania. Um, it, like Liz described, um, Francis has this amazing gift of making every person feel that they are the most important person that, that, that she ever met. So if she was here, she would want to be hearing from everyone on this call. She'd want to see your faces. I will, I will add that. She'd want you to have your video on. And you would come away with this believing that you were the most important person that showed up today. Um, so I, she talks about her invisible tattoos of uh, be positive and, um, and bright future. Uh, she also says she has an army tattoo. And I have an invisible tattoo as well. And it's WWFD, what would Francis do? Because whenever I find myself in a difficult situation um, or just something that I can't wrap my head around, I think, how would Francis respond? And she'd respond with love. Um, she'd respond with open ears. She always said, listen first, speak last and always treat everyone with dignity and respect. So those are the things that I take away and I try very hard, um, I aspire to in my own leadership. I don't always succeed, I fail sometimes. And I think she has always been very accepting as long as you learn from those failures that we are all human. So those are the lessons that I have taken. I'm so thankful to have met her along this journey uh, because it is definitely transformed my life, made me far more effective than I would have been otherwise. And, and the power of all of these, all of these fellow friends of Francis and how we learn from each other. And, and that network has been so transformational. Thank you, Carrie. Hi, uh, Francis, I think is the perfect embodiment of her off quoted and Sarah quoted it. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase leadership is not a matter of doing. It's a matter of being. I cannot think of a more perfect model for being than Francis. She is always present and always engaged with those around us. Liz, you mentioned that um, she embraces everyone she meets as they are, who they are, and where they are at that precise moment in their life. And more importantly, she does not judge you. And I think that is the critical difference between Francis and, and most people. She does not judge and she does not criticize. And she is so phenomenally uh, consistent in that. I personally was touched by Francis's leadership, an extraordinary state of being very early on in our relationship. Um, I misinterpreted a request from her and I remember sitting across from her and we were looking at each other with this puzzled look at each other. And simultaneously, we both realized what had taken place 
that I had done an absolute literal interpretation of her request. And she was so caught off guard that she burst out laughing. <laughs> In her style, it was a full belly laugh and she was mortified that she had laughed. And so she tried hard not to be laughing and she was half smiling and trying not to laugh. And I was explaining to her, you know, don't worry about it. I am probably the most literal person you have ever met in your life. And she reached out as she often does and she clasps your hand in between hers and she says, I love it, don't change. We chuckled about this from time to time as we would meet for dinner or lunch in the future. And she asked me, promise me, you won't change. So as a result, when I reviewed the drafts of the biographies for this event, I realized that I had once again misinterpreted the instructions, a couple of lines to a mathematician or a computer science means precisely two. And so it's very hard to put your life into, two, into one sentence that goes no more than two lines. I was embarrassed and I hurried to make a correction during the draft period. And then all of a sudden this vision of Frances popped into my mind of her laughing <laughs> when she reads the biographies and she gets to mine and has that puzzled look and say, what is this? And then she rereads it and she sees who wrote it and she will, she will then laugh and smile. And we will be able to laugh about it in the future. And I'm sure my fellow panel mates will rib me about my biography in the future, but it will be all in a good cause because I thought there could be no perfect, more perfect way to um, honor Francis than to be exactly who I am and to keep my promise not to change. Thank you. Thank you. Sue? Great. Hi, everybody. I am Sue Nemeth, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. And um, I had the privilege of meeting Francis uh, when I was the head of an employee group uh, for women at one of my previous uh, corporate companies. And um, as we all know, uh, Francis's leadership cuts across literally everything, you know, the public sector, the private sector, the government sector, every sector, every person. And, um, you know, one of the things, and I, boy, I just love listening to this group. It just uh, makes me so happy. I wanted to share with you, and I saw Diane on your bookshelf. I'm going to keep this up for one moment. And this is my favorite book of all time. This is an anchor for me and my life. And it is not horribly thick, but thick enough that I encourage you all to get your own personal copy because you will learn all of Frances's wisdom. She's written tons of books, uh, some with Sarah and others, but this is, this is my all-time favorite because it, it really gives you all of those nuggets and, and how she led. So how did she impact me? And uh, on a relationship perspective. So I was a Girl Scout and I was a Girl Scout when she was the um, executive director. So I was introduced to her by one of her former board members to work with me with this women's group at my company. I had the largest women's group actually in the country. We had 26% of the women at, at the company um, of the people at the company in the in the uh, organization and, and about 70% of the women in the entire executive women's team. It was a hugely ro robust group. So I had the privilege of meeting her to discuss like, how could she help us? How could she come in and spread her leadership wisdom, not just with me, but with this entire group? How could I bring her in to impact you know, many? And as we all know, she has impacted millions. On a personal note, when I came in, I brought my little Girl Scout badge because I have it thanks to my mom who saved it really very nice and neatly in a clean plastic bag. And I took it out and I shared it with her. And as uh, Carrie said and others, she, she looks at you, she takes her hand, your hand. I literally cried. And this is very common when people meet Francis. Tears come to their eyes. And the reality is because I didn't even know it, but how she influenced me when I was young in elementary school through the Girl Scouts 
helped to make me who I am today. And here I had the absolute privilege years later to meet her and then to help have that word spread to all of my colleagues. So, um, you know, again, I think Francis is, if you know, really read the book, get your own inspiration, live it because you will inspire others. Now, a story I like to tell about bringing her into this group. We created together a executive leadership uh, curriculum where she, uh, you know, generously met one on one with the executive leaders of the company to help them with their leadership skills. And of course, everyone on the phone, she's done this with our friends, as well as hundreds and hundreds more. Um, all of those executives who have been in business for decades came back to me after that session and said, and had you know many training sessions and leadership sessions, said, that was the most impactful session I have ever had in my career. And so again, read the book, you'll get the wisdom. Um, but you know, I was blown away, kind of not, I kind of knew that was going to happen, but it was validation that, yeah, you follow Francis's anchors, her words of wisdom you're hearing here, and they will guide you your whole life. Okay. One final story. We had a meeting, there was about, um, 50 of us and typical Francis form. She didn't stand at the front of the room. We were in a circle. We got our chairs. We went around in a circle. She's about reading the book. She's about circular leadership, circular management, not hierarchical. It's brilliant. I use it to this day. I've used it since I learned about it. Um, we went around. She wanted to hear from each person. It was incredible. It was a relationship with each one of those people in this group setting. One memorable moment was when this young, younger woman who had a little boy, little baby, and said, Francis, what is the one thing I can teach my little boy that you would tell me to do? And complete silence. If you were ever in a presentation with Francis, whether it be 50, 500, 1,000 people, you can hear a pin drop because people are hanging on to her every word. Complete silence. And she just sat there and she said, respect for all. And that's what I want to leave you with respect for all. And no matter how frustrated you are in a situation, how you're trying to get something done, how you have a different opinion, respect for all. So again, here's the book, lots of lessons in this book, and I'll leave you with respect for all. Thank you. Thank you. Toshika, do you want to um, chime in on how Francis Hesselbein's service leadership defined your life and your leadership? Hello, everybody. My name is Toshiko Inoue. I'm Japanese. I met Francis all, over the half a century ago when I was 17 years old. Since then, I went back to Japan. I met her in Hawaii. I went back to Japan. Then uh, we uh, became a pen pal, you know, pen friend. We don't have any Facebook, email, anything like that kind of digital things at that time. It was, remember, 50 some years ago. And she always answered my letter and the letter and note always finished with, when are we gonna see each other again? Foundry, Francis, that is her, end of the note and letter. So when I have a chance to come to New York, after two, three years that, I drop off to her office without announcing. And she looks like very busy. I was guided into her room. She looks like a very busy. So I said, Francis, I don't want to bother you. Nothing bother me by friend. She said, I am a busy person, as you know, but I have a few minutes with my close friend. That makes me feel like, my goodness, this lady. That's what, was, uh, that what makes me keep on going. This is incident taught me a lesson. Be generous about the time to the friend that extended to my, be generous my time to my client. And I was quite successful for the financial advisor. That's 
my other story. Uh, thank, thank you. When, um, given the time, I'm going to, you know, skip to the third question we had for the panel and let everybody um, uh, talk about um, how Francis Hesselbein's service leadership defines or helps you in how you touch other people. And it's really about the flywheel, as Jim Collins calls it, because we're taking Francis in ourselves and helping other people be touched by Francis so that you can help others also be touched. Uh, and I'd like um, Diane to uh, start. Thank you, Liz. So everyone has talked about Francis and her emphasis on dignity and respect for all. And I had a transformational, almost a defining moment in my life in the Hesselbein Forum in, I think it was 2012, when a participant on a panel that I was speaking at, like this one, said, I don't feel like I deserve to be here. I feel like there are these student body presidents and people who founded nonprofits and have had all these amazing accomplishments. And I haven't done any of those things. And I'm not sure I deserve to be here. I don't feel like a leader. And Francis tells a story every year uh, when we were in person, she would tell this story. And I've heard the story a hundred times about Mr. Yi and the Chinese vases. And I'm posting a link and I won't repeat it here, but it's essentially how she learned at seven years old, the inherent dignity and value of everyone, regardless of what they do in society, they all do something worthwhile. So I remembered something that happened in my life that now guides me in everything that I do going forward. And it was how growing up, uh, I was like the first person to, in my family to go to college as well. And my father had only finished the ninth grade and I was really embarrassed by that fact. And he was a bus driver for 40 years. And I was also embarrassed by that fact because I didn't think being a bus driver was making a great contribution to society. But I remembered the story that Frances told about Mr. Yi and how her grandmother treated Mr. Yi, even though he was the person who did their laundry. And when my father died, a young woman that we didn't know came to his funeral and it was apparent that she had Down syndrome. And at the end of the funeral, she came forward in front of the whole crowd and read a letter about Mr. Ryan was the best bus driver uh, ever. And he drove her every day to her job at Burger King and told her she did a great job and how sad she would be to not have that in her life every day. So the message is, everyone is important. Everyone deserves to be seen. And that has transformed the way I interact with people at a restaurant or on the street, certainly in my classroom. If I see a student who maybe thinks that they don't deserve to be there or they are not being seen, um, I try to make that effort extra effort. Uh, so that's her defining moment helped me to discover my defining moment and these things together inform how I hope to be seen as a leader. Can I ask you to follow up to on how you build Francis into all your leadership classes? Because you teach Francis, you know, when you're teaching at West Point or any place else, you bring Francis there. And that's part of how you bring Francis to others. So in the book, uh, there's a story about how she transformed the Girl Scouts and making it a more inclusive organization. And the mandate that she gave to her marketing team or her uh, curriculum team was that everyone should see themselves. So regardless of where you were from in the country, what your nationality, your race or ethnicity or other identity was, there should be examples in the guidebook, in the marketing materials uh, how they changed the um, emblem and the pin that everyone wore was a way for everybody to see themselves. So that's how I teach my classes now. I, I do a deep dive on the syllabus to make sure the readings are diverse, 
if I have slides, if I have speakers, I want to make sure that over the course of a semester, everybody sees a positive role model example of someone that they can identify with and have the exposure to the diverse perspectives as well, which is so important. I hope that answered your question, Liz. Thank you. Um, Darlene, can you talk about how Francis's service leadership defines how you touch others? Absolutely, thank you. Uh, long story short, after decades after being um, in the Girl Scout troop, which thanks to Francis, um, my very shy mom was able to establish one uh, so that we young uh, black and brown little girls would have a place to be, to learn so many of the things that we learn and get these badges that we saw other girls have. Decades later, I would meet Francis as, at one of, as one of our advisors in the W.K. Kellogg National Leadership Fellowship Program. The A Group 13, I have to give a shout out. And then shortly afterwards, be honored to uh, join the Peter F. Drucker Foundation, the Board for Nonprofit Management. But simply put, um, from the classroom, through boardrooms, into communities, Francis is with me every single day. Some examples. In my courses, I teach leadership, I teach management. Um, I've been doing this for decades, let's put it that way. This is the day before a very big birthday, let's put it that way, today is. Uh, so I've been teaching leadership and management like Diane, and I've also been teaching courses on power, privilege, and oppression, and racial equity. And Frances comes in there through her adage around respect and dignity, multiculturalism, the power of connection, everything that you've heard my friends speak to. And yes, in the book and in the books. In the boardroom, um, I'm the chair of several boards um, and I'm also a member of several incredibly visionary boards. Um, I always start our board meetings with quotes from Francis so that I look at what is on the agenda that we've tried to very thoughtfully put together at our board meeting with their executive uh, working group or our management team and try to capture what the essence is, what's the message from today and find something from Francis to use to start the board meeting. So it's a, it's a mini lesson, if you will. And they forgive me for this, uh, knowing that I'm an um, incorrigible academic. <laughs> And they actually, I found, you know, the highest form of flattery is if somebody repeats what you've said. So in presentations from the staff about some of the content, even budgetary information, they're able to talk about the impact of Francis's words and how it affected their understanding of what they're about to present for that day. Someone is available to take your call. Please leave a message in the phone. I think Toshiko, no, I don't know who it is, is getting a call. Anyway, and into the community, into the community um, through professional writings. I was honored to be a part of two books that uh, Francis and Marshall Goldsmith had published. Uh, and I also continue to write book chapters. I um, the research that I do, participatory action research, speaks to the power of connection. So wherever I am, either here in this country or internationally, being involved with PAR, a la Palo Freire, if anybody's familiar, um, I speak to how the power of connection showed up in one little lady's life and continues to do. I also have these incredible opportunities to be a part of many webinars today. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, but that's this is another forum to be able to talk about uh, Francis and Francis's impact on all of us and through founding our social justice initiative here at Bryn Mawr College, which we now have 350 individual and organizational partners that really get to hear about Francis, the power of connection. They get to hear about multiculturalism. They get to hear about leading, uh, serve to lead, dignity, respect. It's essentially provided a foundation for my entire life and all of my leadership positions and all of my positions personally as well. And I, I, it sounds perhaps glib, but to actually find ways to assist every single person to be the best he, she, they could be, 
that's what Frances has dedicated her entire life to doing. And I've tried my best to do the exact same thing in organizations that I've, I've had an opportunity to sit in positions to bring resources to people to help them be their personal best, to help them activate their dreams. Today's uh, leadership tip, which I read every single day, has talked about fostering intentional leadership. And that's what Francis has done. That's what I continue to try to do my best, again, in the classroom, in board meetings, and into communities everywhere. So it's providential. That's the other part of what Francis talked about. It's providential. So thank you. Sorry, thank you. Tamar, do you want to uh, chip in here yes, on sure. uh, how she's helped you touch? I think that the, one of the things that really stands out for me about Francis <clears throat> um, is there's a, there's a, in the Southern Hemisphere, really, a renowned cultural biologist named Umberto Maturana. Those of you that are on today who are from South America may recognize his name. He's um, <clears throat> He died a couple of years ago, but he is um, really renowned for uh, coining the term the biology of love and understanding how humans and human beings, because we're a linguistic uh, interact differently um, biologically with one another than most other species. But one of the things that um, Umberto would define as love, his definition of love was um, the legitimacy of the other. That um, you're, you're, it's an act of love when you give legitimacy and in Francis's words, respect to any other being and to understand that um, there are layers of history in that person's life experience that um, build up to who they are, regardless of whether you agree with how they're living their life or with some of the things that they've done or they're doing, um, that their life is legitimate. Um, even in the most heinous kind of crimes, there are history in someone's experience that has built up to that. And fundamentally, what... Um, cultural biologists agree on is the human need for the sense of belonging. And I think Francis is the great master of understanding how important it is for people to have a sense of belonging. And she built the structures in the Girl Scouts around ensuring to the best that she could that people, that any little girl um, that joined the Girl Scouts would first and foremost experience a sense of belonging to something um, that there and that they would be seen as unique that each little girl that would be a participant would be seen as unique as a unique individual and she used a lot of um, her terms and um, she was subtle in how she would deliver messages at a time you think about when how when she was raised and and received a public education it was all the dominant society white culture patriarchal culture um but francis not only you know gave instruction around how she wanted the organization to be reflected in the community so that each girl or volunteer could see themselves in the pictures and the things that were illustrated about the girl scouts but she was careful to, about who she would quote, which was a subtle way of letting people know that it is not just white majority culture that has the wisdom. So one of the quotes she would often use was from Arthur Ashe. And for those of you who aren't from the United States, you may not have heard of Arthur Ashe, who was a, one of the first African-American tennis players, um, who was a professional tennis player. This quote that she would use often was, start where you are, Use what you have, do what you can, um, as just an empowering statement, of, particularly in the kind of times that we live in, when young people would just look at the future that they're inheriting and wonder what they could do. And that calm sense that Francis would look you in the eye, often take your hand and say, dear, start where you are, use what you have, and do, and she would always add, do all you can, not just what you can. Um, 
And I think that's part of the magic of this piece about relationship, to understand that um, she would go in relation, go into a relationship with someone, not only not transactionally, but in first, how can I serve this person and understand that what I call the Pythagorean principle, that there is a return exchange. If you enter into a relationship with anyone with the intention of service and love, that whether, whether that person ends up serving you in return or someone down the line, that there is an exchange of energy that comes back and renews that gift of love. And you know, fundamentally, Francis has walked a life of love and giving and supporting others and being inclusive and trying to see and other one of the other terms she always will say right in the middle when you're talking something she will say well shine the light honey shine the light and it's shine the light on the best and on the brilliant that that shows up in a bus driver that that makes a difference that changes lives that you never know down the line what that individual will do for society and for the betterment of all and um but fundamentally, the thing I think I always try to do when I think about Francis is um, to enter in relationship with love and um, to give, to do all I can to give people a sense of belonging, regardless of what role I have in a group or an organization, uh, that fundamentally what I want to measure as an outcome in our success is do people feel like they belong um, and benefit from the relationships in the organization or the group. And that's fundamentally, Frances is an act of love in her life has been service of love. Thank you. We, we just have a minute or two left. And Sarah, can you uh, give us a couple closing words as Frances's co-editor? Am I unmuted? I am. I can. It's been so lovely to be here. I'm closing, right, Liz? This is our this is our time together. It's been wonderful. And thank you to uh, University of Pittsburgh and the uh, Global Academy uh, for letting us be here. And you can tell we're so inspired and thrilled to share Francis's um, legacy of leadership and who she is as a person and her uh, impact on us. And I have a little bit of a story that I'm gonna tell really quick. Years ago, Frances and I went to lunch and she asked me the question she asked nearly everyone she meets. What do you see when you look out the window that's visible but not yet seen by others? I attempted an answer and I wanted to hear more answers too. So along with we, along with top executive Marshall Goldsmith, published a book together titled Work is Love Made Visible, in which 30 or so of the world's top business organization and thought leaders answered this question for us. This question is Francis's brilliant term, turn on a statement by Peter Drucker, who, when asked how he always knew what was going to happen in management and business, said, I just look out the window and see what is visible, but not yet seen by others. Little side note, Peter Drucker is the uh, father of modern management. And he also said that Francis Hesselbein is the greatest leader that he ever met. So he knew. Francis, who takes to heart Peter's great leadership advice, ask, don't tell, turn this statement into a question for all of us to answer. So we really love, and we wanna leave you with this message, we really love Alan Mulally's answer for its focus on working together towards a bright future. The former CEO of Boeing and Ford said, I see talented and motivated people working together for the greater good. I see three elements that are absolutely critical to the success of any venture, company, product, or life. They are humility, love, and service. I see the unique contribution of leaders to hold themselves and their leadership teams responsible and accountable for creating smart and healthy organizations that are delivering value for the greater good for all of the stakeholders. Isn't it incredible to think of the reach of Francis Hesselbein all the way through? And we're so happy that we were able to um, 
to talk with you today. Thank you. Bella, are we turning it back over to you now or? Yes, I am just trying to change the spotlight. Okay, there we go. Uh, we want to thank all of the panelists for their wonderful discussion today and sharing their very thoughtful stories and touch points with Francis. We also want to thank all of the participants who have joined us for this session as well today. At the conclusion of the summit, you will receive an email with a link to a survey. We ask that you please complete the survey at your earliest convenience to share some feedback about your learning experience today. At this time, we encourage you to transition to your next session using the Zoom links, which are located back in the summit program. Thank you again, and please have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.